Okay, so one of the biggest challenges that I find when it comes to science writing is communication. Communicating ideas, communicating thought, communicating what you've read from your sources, making logical arguments, the structure of writing. These are all things that I find that students generally really struggle with. And it, there's a very simple formula that I've picked up along the way and I thought I'd share it with you guys today. So this formula is made up of four parts and that forms a typical paragraph. So it's just the topic sentence, evidence, analysis, and then the conclusion. So these are four parts of any paragraph that you write within your essay, dissertation, assignment, whatever it is that you are writing within science communication, within science writing, this is the structure that you want to follow when writing, which will guarantee that you hit those top marks. Now, looking at a mark scheme, um, let's just look at the top grade. So I'm looking at a mark scheme right now, an undergraduate mark scheme for a dissertation, looking at 80% to 100%, which is would be outstanding distinction. It says that structure and organization is coherent, polished and fluent which means that those sentences put together to make a paragraph need to make sense and need to flow secondly knowledge displayed is comprehensive coherent polished and fluent so again the sources that you use and the sources that you want to present within your writing needs to be written in a way that makes sense and that shows that you've actually done that reading so again we'll look at that structure and how you apply that the third part the application of knowledge and understanding is comprehensive, coherent, polished and fluent. So again, we're back to the whole coherent, polished and fluent thing. And again, that's to do with your knowledge. The third, analysis is comprehensive. So not you haven't just written down, right, I've used this source and this is what it means. You're actually analysing it and critiquing it in a way that makes sense. And then lastly, use of source material is comprehensive, coherent, polished and fluent. So as you can see, I'm just looking at a mark scheme from a, from a top university within the UK. The structure, organisation, knowledge, application, so critical reflection, analysis, so critical evaluation, and the use of source material. These are all things that need to be really, really high level in order to, for you to kind of hit those top marks and in order to do that using the paragraph structure that i'm going to talk about a bit more in this video will ensure that you are able to keep that kind of structure the coherent the flow correct within your writing to ensure that you hit those top marks okay so the first part is a topic sentence so the first line the first sentence of any paragraph needs to be a topic sentence and i'm going to be showing you some examples today of each of the sections and how they flow all together so a topic sentence is the first sentence Sentence that introduces a new idea right so you're bringing together a new idea you're saying right this is the idea there shouldn't be a discussion there shouldn't be any sources any references you are introducing an idea or you are linking in episode previous so let's say you had a different paragraph first and then you're now starting a second paragraph you're now transitioning to a new idea either way that first sentence should be a statement right it shouldn't be a comparison it should just be a statement imagine the first sentence acting as a frame right so you've started off that first sentence framing what's to come okay so you said you've said that this is a box the box is looks like this this is the color and this is what i have right so you're framing it so let's look at an example so i'll put the example over here so you can see this is an example of a very 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 beautifully written paragraph quite a long one and i'll break it down for you in a second but the first sentence is a topic sentence so you can see that it says in addition to why it says that is because it's linking it to the previous paragraph and that's because it's communicating how this paragraph relates to the previous one so in addition to the frontal and basal ganglia so i'm assuming that the previous paragraph is talking about the frontal and basal ganglia the parietal cortex also undergoes a great deal of developmental change during adolescence. So, in the previous paragraphs, they clearly mentioned something to do with the frontal and basal ganglia, so that was before. Now, in this paragraph, we're going to be speaking about how the parietal cortex also undergoes this developmental change during adolescence. So even though I haven't read what's coming up, I have no idea. But this introductory sentence, the topic sentence, tells me what this paragraph is going to be about and it is beautifully written. It's giving me all the detail that I need without waffling and I think when I'm editing work, 
the page doctor so i have an academic consultancy called the page doctor.com i'll leave a link for it down below where i look at work and can support students structure their work better essentially one of the biggest like edits that i that i make and that i see is the first sentence and also the last sentence because those are the sentences where you're joining and you're linking ideas you're introducing and when that's not clear the rest of the sentence and the rest of the paragraph just is is very confusing okay the second part of your paragraph now is the evidence so you've given your statement you're now going to give the evidence like how can you justify what you've just said you've just said that the parietal cortex is also involved but how do you know this where have you read this where is it in literature that this has been stated and this is where the evidence comes in so assuming this is for something like your dissertation, you are going to be summarizing the work of others, right? It's not your own work, it's the work of others. So this next section should have references. It should be very clear that this work is not yours. There should be citations and it should be very clear that the work that you've taken is from previously published work, essentially. So let's take a look at an example. So you can see that similar to what has been described above, there have been numerous accounts of parietal grey matter reduction during adolescence. And there are three references here that this person has added um, in order to support that. These changes in the parietal cortex track closely with similar reductions, etc, etc. Additionally, and they've said what they've used in order to evidence it. This, this paper has used MR studies, EEG studies, um, and then finally, so they've given like three kind of points right so evidence is not just using one paper and going in depth it could be using two or three papers but you want to kind of tell a story about the evidence that you have found right so they've said that the first sentence they've said that they've compared to what they've mentioned before which is really good because you want to make sure that you're telling a story so they've compared to what they've said before they've then said that these changes are closely tracked with another part of the brain which again is really interesting because again you're linking to what you know before they then talked about adolescence because don't forget in your topic sentence this person mentioned adolescence so it makes sense for there to be some evidence that they're talking about that has to do with adolescence. Again, they've, they've shown that their understanding of what they've read in the sources is very mature and it's quite strong because they've talked about the techniques, the actual like methods that were used to identify these results. These results were found in you know, EEG studies and this that's been correlated. They've used words like you know, connectives, like finally, additionally, similar to. All of this language really shows a certain maturity in your understanding and it shows like a slight analysis as well without the in-depth analysis. So you'll notice the, the analysis coming up next, but they haven't really discussed it. They've just presented the information that they've read, which is really good. You can also see further down, there's also a little bit more evidence that has been given um, further down as well. So every sentence in this paragraph, in this section of the paragraph has been referenced because it is not their work. Okay, then the third section of the paragraph is analysis. Now this is where the top marks come in. So again, when I'm looking at work, you know, typically topic sentences will be there. Evidence will always be there. That's something that students like are, you know, know to do. Evidence will always be there. Then analysis is where the weakness is. And that is where your grades can go from like 40% up to 80% if the analysis is done right. Because this is where the critical discussion comes in. So the analysis, and again, I'll, I'll talk a bit more about analysis and what it is. So analysis is thinking about um, comparison. So comparing to what you have read before or what other studies are out there. You can also evaluate, and that's another way of an analyzing. You can apply theories or different frameworks, and that is also analyzing. So using your knowledge, using the theory that you've learned within your lectures and within university and your other reading, you're bringing that into the discussion, into this topic. Analysis is also mathematical. So if you are, if you have got your own data that you've used, then you can add this data into this section here. So you can say, whilst these papers and whilst these researchers and this data shows this, my data also shows this, or my data contradicts or doesn't show this, whatever it is, you're analyzing it and you're bringing the mathematical and the theoretical aspects within your discussion. So that is where this analysis part comes into it. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. So if we continue on the same paragraph, it says that in addition to working memory, the observed, observed refinements in the parietal cortex are also likely to contribute to, to improvements. They've gone beyond just saying that 
this is what the cortex, this part of the cortex does. They say that it's likely that it does this. So can you see the language that's being used? It is likely that, right? It is conceivable that, okay? So we've gone from saying these changes are, additionally, this happens, finally, this happens, to now we are being a bit more suggestive because we're putting in our own analysis. So this is where like the critical reasoning, the critical analysis, evaluation, this is where that comes in. And like, the wording and the language that you use also has to change. So it is conceivable that the role is allowing an individual to try on. So they put that in because it's like, you know, they're trying to give an example. They're trying to make this, uh, put everything together to make it make sense. And then it says, for example, this has become a rather common practice and they're given an example with, with golfing right so this analysis is again so strong because they've been able to bring together what they've read bring together a link into what they've read before like spoken about before and given an example and said like you know use language like it is conceivable that and this is really powerful because it does show it shows like i said a maturity and it shows a really high level thinking when it comes to analyzing and scientific text and then last but definitely not least is the conclusion of a paragraph. So conclusions allow you to bring together ideas. They allow you to kind of like bring together that discussion and sort of highlight or sort of summarize the sources that you've been speaking about. Now there's a small conclusion and there's like an actual conclusion. So if this was a dissertation and you're writing a paragraph, then you might have a small concluding sentence at the end of that paragraph, but then you obviously carry on. If you have an actual conclusion, that's a whole different thing. But I'm speaking more on like the paragraphs within your dissertation, within your like literature review, what that looks like. The last sentence should be concluding and possibly transitioning. So if you're if you're going to continue to speak and discuss this particular topic, then you want to conclude it and then give a little like I like to call it a teaser. So a little something that then allows the sentence to string on to the next topic sentence of the next paragraph and again when it's done well this looks beautiful and it just helps the whole dissertation and the whole like the text flow beautifully now one thing to note is that although i've just mentioned a structure which is the topic sentence and the evidence uh, analysis and then a conclusion it doesn't have to be structured exactly like that for every single paragraph so what you may find is that you introduce a topic um, sentence so you bring that in and then you give some evidence you analyze it and then you might want to give a bit more evidence and analyze that so that might make sense but and then you conclude at the end so depending on like where in your essay and your dissertation that you are you might want to give like a bit of evidence so one bit of evidence another bit another bit and then you can you analyze or one thing that I used to do quite a bit is I'll give evidence and then I'll analyze that bit of evidence and then give some more evidence to like continue to support or even not to continue to support but to actually like, like develop that argument. So you've introduced it, you've given some evidence and you've discussed that evidence but then you wanna like develop that argument and you wanna go a bit more in depth. You feel free to add some more evidence there always making sure to reference at all times. And then of course, um, then you analyze and then you conclude it. But the whole way through, do make sure that everything is being linked and the flow is beautiful. With this topic, like with this structure, honestly, like one thing that I found is it just transforms work. It completely transforms work. When you think of it like that, have I got a topic sentence? Yes. Have I presented my evidence? Yes. Have I analyzed that evidence? Okay. And have I concluded it? Once you've done that, it's just a matter of sort of lightly editing, maybe taking some things out, maybe adding a little bit, but the structure itself isn't going to change. Actually, what I'll do in a future video is I'll talk a bit more about what, like the evidence, how do you pick, like how do you pick information from a paper, right? So you have to read like a whole paper and you're just writing two sentences from that paper. Like how do you actually do that? That'll be a video for the future. Um, and do let me know if you wanna see something like that. But um, that is essentially the structure. And if you do that, you can hit 80%, 90% in your essays. It is as easy as that literally as simple as that and before i finish i wanted to just quickly mention the academic manchester academic phrase bank which i think is really helpful and a really cool tool to be able to find that terminology and find that language to use within your paragraph structure so just changing a few like phrases and a few words that you use can have a huge impact 
on the way that your paragraphs sound. So the academic phrase bank, again, I'll show you over here. The academic phrase bank is a free like source, which I, I think is just like completely underrated. And it's like, we're so lucky to have people that will develop these things for us and put it on the internet. So you can see here that, if, for example, for the introduction, you can say, something has been instrumental in our understanding of something else. And then that can be your introductory sentence. Or the issue of X has received considerable critical attention. And then that's how you continue. You can refer to previous work, several theories on the origin of X have been proposed. And that can be like your introductory topic sentence before you then go into the other sections. And they've got so many phrases here that you can use. And then if you go up again, you can see that you've got a, a whole of range of other language functions that you can use for the other sections as well. So invaluable, oh my gosh, I cannot believe we have this just available on the internet for free. Like we are so, so lucky. And I, I just wanted to share it with you guys in case you you didn't know about it before. But yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Let me know if you are going to use it. Don't forget to save this video for when you do write an essay next come September. But let me know if you found this helpful and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.